Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Academy Coordinates. In this video, I'm going to take you guys on a route on how to sketch quadratic functions. The steps I'm going to teach you guys about might be implemented on other functions as well. But for the sake of this video, I've decided to limit myself to quadratic functions. You know what I'm saying? So do grab a pen and paper and let's do this match together. Okay, this is the standard equation of a parabolic function, right? Or a parabola or a quadratic function this is the standard equation and this is the vertex form of it from the standard form to the vertex form you complete the square i taught you guys on how to complete the square on the previous video so you can go there and actually appreciate um the technique of completing the square okay to sketch any function all right First and foremost, you must know the intercepts. You must determine the intercepts. The intercepts are where your function will either cut the, 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 the y-axis or the x-axis, right? For the y-intercept, you let x equals to zero. Why are you doing that? You know, because of you are you are looking for you are looking for the value where the function will actually cut the y-axis. You know what I'm saying? So the equation of the y-axis is x equals to zero. I repeat, the equation for the y axis is x equals to 0, right? So you might have 1, you might have 2, um, negative 1, negative 2. But here you've got, I mean, x equals to 0. So that's why you let x equals to 0. And if your function is in this form, it's actually easier because you can just say f of 0 is equals to a times 0 squared plus b times 0 plus c. So f of 0 will equal to c. You know what I'm saying? So your y-intercept will be 0 and c. Or the y-intercept, you can say you're looking for the value of y when x equals to 0. That can also be accepted. Okay, secondly, you look for your x-intercept where your graph will touch or cut the x-axis. You know what I'm saying? So, um, obviously here, y equals to 0. This, the y, I mean the x-axis, the equation of the x-axis is y equals to 0. You know what I'm saying? You might have y equals to negative 1, y equals to negative 2, but this one is, is y equals to 0. So, hence you let y equals to 0. You know? So, it's going to be 0 equals to ax squared plus bx plus c and then when you are here you factorize you know you're going to factorize the equation into a form whereby you can be able to find um either x equals to you must take it to this form maybe you can say x plus a or x plus b it depends you know what i'm saying um on what function are you given and stuff like that this is just an example you know you might receive or see a quadratic function that is maybe not so easier to just factorize just like that you know what i'm saying um let's say for example okay let's say for example you are given x squared plus zero um x plus uh let's say minus four equals to zero you know what I'm saying? I wrote this um, zero intentionally so that sometimes this function can be written as x squared minus 4 equals to 0. It can be written like this. You know what I'm saying? But even though it is written like this, you can also take it to this thing, you know, such that the middle, the coefficient of x there is 0. Okay, for example, this is the difference of two squares. So when you factorize, it's going to be x minus 2 uh, multiplied by x plus 2 equals to zero right so x will equals to minus two i mean plus two from here or x will equals to minus two right and hence your x intercept here will be two and zero and minus two and zero okay this was just an example okay but you might be given um let's say quadratic um quadratic equations that are not so much easier to simplify or to factorize like this and in such instances you use um, a quadratic formula right let me just write it here x is equals to minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a you know okay this is the quadratic equation 
and also i would like us to appreciate something guys on the quadratic equation that if b squared minus 4ac if this equals to zero right um your parabola will only touch the x-axis right um, if you're looking for the x-intercept, it's gonna it's only gonna be one value that you are gonna find. You know what I'm saying? And then if b squared minus four ac is greater than zero, right? Then your parabola will cut, right? The x the x axis, and hence you will find two values. You know, these are just examples, or it can cut it like this, but you will you will find two values of x, right? Okay, but what happens when b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, you know? So, imagine we are having a square root of a negative number. Let's say c. A square root of a negative number. This is um, undefined. You might reach such a thing maybe in a test or an exam, and then you are asking yourself what in the world is going on. You know what I'm saying? So, just grab a chill pill because... It might mean that maybe your graph does not have x-intercept. Maybe your graph is like this, for example. But just make sure that you follow the right steps, you know, and um, just um, make sure that you actually uh, follow the right steps. So, you know, you find the x-intercept and the y-intercept in this manner. Secondly, you guys must find the axis of symmetry. Of symmetry. The axis of symmetry di divides your graph into half. Like if you've got maybe a graph like this. I think I'm so in love with the first quadrant today. I don't know why. It divides your graph into half. So the value of the axis of symmetry will be x is equals to something, right? And so let's say you, you have f of x is equals to ax squared plus bx plus c. So your axis of symmetry will be x equals to minus b over 2a. That is it. You know what I'm saying? And also, it's unlike the um, it's unlike the problems we dealt with previously where we just say x equals to 0 for the axis of symmetry. You know, because of in, in such functions, we never had... Um, um, horizontal shift. So now we have introduced you guys to horizontal shift. So this is the axis of symmetry, right? Okay, we move right along to the turning point. The turning point. Turning point. Okay. The turning point is where the graph turns. You know what I'm saying? Maybe this is this will be the turning point. Um, let's say you've got a graph like this. Um. And here it's a 3, this is y, this is x, and here it's a 3. The turning point of this graph will be 3 and 0. That's where the graph turns. So that's what, that is what we mean by a turning point. And you'll appreciate something here, that the axis of symmetry will help you in this, in this regard. Because um, at the turning point, the x... Um, value of the turning point will be the axis of symmetry, right? So the turning point will be uh, minus b divided by 2a, which is this, the axis of symmetry. Um, and then also the, the, the y value will be the value of f of x. If your function is f of x, you actually insert this right into f of x, uh, minus b over 2a, right? This will be it. You know what I'm saying? So Basically, guys, for, for the turning point, it's where your graph turns. You know what I'm saying? And the and, and the axis of symmetry will, the axis of symmetry will actually be the x coordinate of the turning point. And also, we just um, completed the square, and then we got an equation in this manner: y is equal to a into x times x minus p all squared plus q. If your equation or your graph Sorry, your function is in this way. So listen, guys, you don't even need to sweat here, right? You just look at it. The turning point will be <clears throat> P and Q. And also, people might have a problem with P as to why did, did I say P there? Let's say, for example, you had an equation Y is equals to um, 
x um, minus 4 all squared plus 3, for example. Let's say you had an equation like this. The turning point of this will be 4 and 3. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> that is the the benefit of the um of the vertex form, right? Such that you can actually look at the turning point from the actual graph. You see? So this is how you actually look at um this is how you actually go about sketching quadratic functions. You know, let me just uh take you guys back a bit here. For example, <clears throat> here you want to say that x is equals to negative 2, right? But x is equals to 2 for this case. So looking here, looking here, right? Um, um, looking here, right? The value of x here will be 4, not negative 4. So this is where maybe some people might be like, what in the world is going on? I mean, like you said, 4, isn't it negative 4 and 3? No, that's not the case. So the turning point will be this. And before I can conclude the video, so let's just look at this as to where this might be. 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then y, 1, 2, 3, for example. Let's say you are here. 4 and 3. Your graph can turn, can go like this. Yeah. If, um, okay, obviously here it's 1, so obviously a is positive so your graph will go something like this so yeah guys do stay cool on the next video i'm actually going to do a an example where where we are gonna plot not actually plot but sketch the parabolic sorry yes the parabolic function you know what i'm saying and then after we're gonna see different points and also we will appreciate um the characteristics of the function you know we're gonna interpret the function as to what is the domain of the function and 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 um the domain of the function the range of the function where is the function increasing and where is the function decreasing you know what i'm saying so we are going to appreciate such things you know i don't want this to be a long video you know so that you guys can be bored and uh drained you know what i'm saying so just stay tuned for the next video i'll be explaining each and everything there and then um I'll actually do a live example. So until then, if you don't understand anything about this about this video, do comment below or email me and then we can actually tackle it. Do stay cool, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day.